the best highlights across Northeast Wisconsin. This is Friday Night Blitz with Brandon Kennard. Here we go with a level four edition of the Blitz. Thanks for being with us tonight as teams across the state punch their tickets to Camp Randall. Seven area teams alive heading into tonight's state semifinals. Let's find out how many remain. Starting with Sports Showdown, Kakana taking on a dominant Wanakee team, which came in allowing fewer than five points per game. And they strike first, Ben Lindley with a one yard touchdown run. It's seven nothing Warriors. Same score, second quarter. This was a big play for the Galloping Ghost. Trying the fake punt here, Wanaki is, but it stuffed Isaac Moss all over it. And on the ensuing drive, this is on a third and 12, mind you, Connor Kinchlow off to the right and off to the races. Down the right sideline, keeping his feet and just gets in. A 65 yard touchdown to tie it at seven. First play of the second half. It's a 10 to seven Wanakee lead now and Lindley gets loose. Big run down inside the 20. They score to play later to go up 17-7. But Kakana not going away. Here's Kinchlow with his second of the night. That caps off an 80 yard touchdown drive. Goes back within three. About eight minutes to play. This might have been the ball game. Kakana going for it on fourth and five. They give it to Kinchlow. Trying to drive the pile, but he's stopped short. Wanaki takes over and they turn it into points. Lindley in for his third touchdown. The hat trick makes it 24-14 and that's the eventual final. A terrific season for the Ghosts. Over one win shy of Camp Randall. Let's set it out to John Mino in Ripon. Coach, emotional, hard-hitting game. What's that feeling like with that ball club right now? <laughs> it's tough. Uh, it's really tough because they're a great group of kids that is that have worked so hard this year. So it's hard to say goodbye to them. Uh, they're a special group that I think O'Connell will remember for a long time. So, lost your quarterback early, came back, he played outstanding. Yeah, he did. He did. He's a, he's a competitor, and um, he's more than that. He's a great teammate, and he wasn't going to let us go without being there for us. Uh, I, I'm not surprised that he came back. He's a tough, gritty kid, and he's put it on the line for us week after week, so I'm not surprised that he came back, and we love him. He's a great teammate. How proud is this community of this team? <laughs> I don't think I can put it into words. It's a big deal. doesn't come around a long t uh, very often. It's been 30-some years since we've had a team like this. We're so proud of them, down to every single one of them. Congratulations, Coach. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. It's Miller time now. A couple of area teams playing down near Madison tonight, and our John Miller caught them both. Brandon, I'm way far away from Green Bay. I'm out at DeForest High School, about 30 minutes north of Madison, as we have two Northeast Wisconsin teams trying to make their way to the state title games down in Madison. Let's start in Division 6 as one seed Kiwani took on one seed Darlington. We will start in the second half, storm up 28 to 20, but the Redbirds drive down the field on the first possession, and Maddox Goble punches it in, two pointer, no good. Now the Storm fumbled three times on their next possession. They recovered two of them, but as they're on the Redbirds nine yard line, they don't recover this one. And that's all right, the Redbirds don't capitalize. They have the ball again now, and Brett Paulson goes to throw. He's picked off by Brady Long. Nobody's gonna stop him. He takes this one to the house. Two pointer is good. Darlington goes up six. Now the Storm will march down the field, get all the way inside the red zone. They're faced with a fourth and six with just over two minutes to go. And the pass falls incomplete from Stengel, and the Storm sees their season come to a close. Here's head coach, Randy Charles. I'm definitely really proud of these guys. Uh, would never want any other bunch than what we got right here. Um, you know, sometimes things don't go our way, but I'm, I'm proud of them. They, they fought hard through the entire game, no matter what happened, even when uh, things didn't go our way. Um, you know, and, and they deserve to be here. Okay? Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that, and tonight just wasn't our night. Now over at Sun Prairie, we head to the Division I level, two seed Kimberly, the reigning Division I champs, trying to make it back to Madison, but first they have to get through Marquette, who has whooped up on their playoff opponents. Now Papermakers driving on their first possession, they have a fourth and long in Hilltoppers territory, and they'll come up just short of the first down marker on this complete pass, turnover on downs. Now two plays later, Mikey Wilds for the Papermakers picks off the Hilltoppers. Now Marquette gets their own turnover a few plays later. Carson Pendleton scrambling around, gets hit, and it's recovered by Tate Kowalik for the Hilltoppers. Can they capitalize? Peter McDevitt heaves it to the end zone. Thad Hoffman skies up for it. 
seven to nothing Hilltoppers lead early in the second. Now Papermakers answer right back. Pendleton through the air. And look at this grab by Bryson Beath over the defender. 33 yard touchdown catch and we're tied. However, there will be no repeat for Kimberly this year. They fall 14 to seven to Marquette. So not the result that Kimberly and Kiwani wanted, but congrats nonetheless on an amazing season. And before I go, I wanted to give a special shout out to all my fellow Marine Corps veterans. Happy birthday. From DeForest High School, John Miller, NBC 26. Well said, Mr. Miller, and thank you for your service. Now, Marquette had a late touchdown to win that game, not seen in those highlights. Here that is, courtesy of the Post Crescent's web stream. That's with just over five to play in a tie game. Tommy Novotny, just a sophomore with a 22-yard touchdown. Marquette, as John said, goes on to win it by seven. Just the third time since 2013 that Kimberly will not be at state. To Division Three now, Notre Dame and Rice Lake. This game played in Marshfield early on. Tritons in the red zone. Huge fourth down stop from the Warriors. Easton Stone forces the turnover on downs, but Notre Dame bounces back. Christian Collins with a touchdown to make it 7 0. Rice Lake, though, starts to roll from then on out. Lucas Peters here, 46 yard house call. Extra point, no good. Still, it's still 7 6. That lead didn't last too long, though. Next drive for Rice Lake, Jacob Kuntz on the QB keeper, breaking ankles, and he will take it all the way. 61-yard touchdown, Rice Lake goes on to win it 30 to 15. All right, let's get some winners here. This is Division Four, Luxembourg, Casco, and Catholic Memorial, and that's the tail end of a long Max Ronsman touchdown run. That puts LC up 20 to seven. They're in control over the powerhouse Crusaders, but, man, Catholic Memorial's a good program, and they're gonna show you why. Check this play out. Under pressure, rolling right, has a man. Spartans can't bring him down. There's a touchdown Catholic Memorial to get back within one score. Spartans back with the football. Ronsman looking to throw. Picked off. And a pick six. So LC in trouble down one. But well, you see the final score, you know how this ends. I was going nuts when this went through. Trace Shanebeck with the game-winning field goal with just seconds on the clock. The Spartans are headed to state for the first time in program history. This is amazing. I'm going to say this, but uh, I believe in God and the faith that we have. And for our players and our coaches and our stands, our communities, it's what you believe in, what faith in God. I'm just going to enjoy this right now. I'm going to enjoy every piece of this with these kids. Making, them, making positive moments with our, our brothers. I can't even talk, I'm so excited. I'm just so happy for Luxburg Casco and our fans, first time ever to state. Just truly blessed, and I thank God and these kids and these coaches. Thank you, Neil, and we will see you at Camp Randall next week. Division five, it's LC's conference rival, Wrightstown, against St. Croix Falls. Tigers with the early roar, Daniel Bunted, just his third touchdown of the season, comes at a great time. He's also the kicker, drilled the extra point to make it seven nothing. Next Tigers possession. Trevor Van Dye, their star quarterback. Watch that though, he just had it ripped away from him by Aiden Medor, and he takes it all the way for the touchdown. So the Saints back within one, seven to six, but you know, this is what Wrightstown does, just long, methodical drives. There's Peyton Van Dye extending the lead with a short touchdown run, and then Jaden Kitto. You get a touchdown, you get a touchdown. The guys in White jerseys were spreading it around. Wrightstown a 33 to 12 winner, back to state for the first time since 2011. And lastly, in Division Seven, Reedsville looking for its second trip to state in the last three years. They're taking on Blackhawk Warren early on. Warriors in motion. Owen oh, Sethru, watch the top of your screen along the far sideline, and just gets to the pylon for the score. And in the second quarter. Blackhawk punching another one in. This one a short touchdown run. There was a lot of that from the Warriors in this one. 36 to seven, they win it. Congrats to Reedsville on a great season. That's all our highlights. We've got two teams headed to state, both from the Northeastern Conference, Luxembourg, Casco, and Wrightstown. We'll come back with our play of the night and show you who they'll be taking on next week after the break. Our Friday Night Blitz play of the night. What else? Trace Shanebeck for Luxembourg Casco. Drills that field goal with just seconds on the clock to put the Spartans 
to Camp Randall for the first time in program history. I remember when I was in high school out there, good teams, but you know, they'd get into the playoffs, maybe win a game. It's incredible what Coach Searing and everyone else have done with that program over the last couple of years. LC, year in, year out, competitive, and now finally headed to Camp Randall for the first time. We'll see you there next Thursday. Luxembourg Casco will be taking on Lodi. The Blue Devils come in undefeated 13-0. They beat Baldwin Woodville 49-29 tonight. They also played Xavier last week, so those two do have a common opponent. Luxembourg Casco beat Xavier back in week one. That game will be 7 o'clock next Thursday night at Camp Randall. And fellow NECer, Wrightstown, they get Lacrosse Aquinas in the Division 5 championship. The Blue Golds a convincing win tonight, 58-14 over Horicon Houstisford. That game will be right before the LC game, scheduled for 4 o'clock next Thursday. So two local teams advancing to Camp Randall, and we'll, have, of course, have you covered when the time comes. Will one or maybe both of those Northeastern Conference foes bring home state championships? Could be fun to see how it unfolds. Have a great weekend.